Hi friends, it's Melanie with Melanie Stamps and today we are creating the Black Eyed Susan with the newly released Birds and the Bees Garden Collection by Spellbinders. This collection I'm having a lot of fun with and I'm starting off today I'm going to show you a little preview of the collection and then we are going to dive right in and I'm going to teach you how to make the Black Eyed Susan which is my favorite flower in the collection. So, of course, I had to start with that one. The Black Eyed Susan is a three-piece set. And you have the leaf, you have the flower, and then you have the center. So, it's a very simple flower. It's very easy to make. And we're going to create one together today. Then you have... Another favorite of mine, actually, I used to love to make asters with Heartfelt Creations. So this is Susan's Aster. It is a little different than what I'm used to, but I absolutely love how natural this one is. I actually got a catalog in the mail that shows a picture here of the Aster along with the Black Eyed Susan. So I thought it was very neat that they were actually together in the photograph. So I've been using that as some inspiration. And just in case you want to order uh, this catalog, you can get these catalogs um, from White Flower Farm. And they will mail them straight to you and it gives you lots of inspiration when making flowers. So we have this one and I will have this one in a video coming up a week from today. So make sure if you're a flower lover like I am, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So this here is the pom pom dahlia and ladybug. So this one has the ladybug in it. We always have a ladybug in the collection. I have not played with this die set yet. But I have watched Susan's video on creating this. There's many layers to it. And each of the petals are cupped upwards like this. And um, it's nice here that the die has so many different sizes. So you get that variegated, in, you know, the variation in size. So that you can get that fullness in the dahlia. Now, my recent trip up to Indiana we got to see a garden full of dahlias, actually two gardens full of dahlias, and they were absolutely breathtaking. They come in so many colors and the blooms are just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I totally appreciate this one. And if I wasn't on such a time limit, I would have loved to get my photos out and do this in all different colors. So this is definitely going to have a special place in my stash. That is definitely sure. So and you've got the, the inner pieces, you've got your ladybug, and you've got the gorgeous leaves. So then, speaking of leaves, pretty excited about this because y'all know I love my fall. So she has fall foliage. It's called autumn foliage, actually. And it's a five-piece die set. And they're really nice size leaves, which can be used in any of your projects, not just your florals. So this can cross over into um, the Fall Better Press projects, the, um, the new wreath collection that's coming out this month that, is, that has some fall in it. I mean, the Autumn Serenade that's come out this month. I mean, these go with everything. So... Definitely a keeper. Way to go, Susan. Wonderful die set. And this one as well. This is a stunning embossing folder. It's a slim line. I do wish it was the larger one, but it is still very versatile. Now, let me show you my card base that I've started for us today. Even though it's a slim line, I used it to do the top half of a 5x7 card. So, but look at the detail. Look at the gorgeous centers of those sunflowers. This can go across all of your fall collections. Even if you're not a 3D flower maker, this 3D embossing folder is definitely 
gorgeous for all. The Autumn Serenade. Hello, that collection and this embossing folder. Matter of fact, in the video I just filmed a moment ago, let me pull this out here. Look, do those not pair together beautifully? Oh my goodness, do I want to mix and match. To me, that is a match made in heaven. <laughs> they are just gorgeous, gorgeous. So yeah, don't get caught up in one collection only. Mix and match your favorites. It's, you know, it, it get the pieces in the parts that you like. But, oh, Susan, you outdid yourself with this folder, girlfriend. It is gorgeous. So, this is what we're starting with, is a 5x7 card base today. I've already prepared that just to save us a little time. And I've already made us our starting flowers. So, we're going to make a flower and a few leaves here together. And then we will finish up a card. So the first thing we're going to do, now I, for the flowers, let me move this so I can move us up a little bit here. For the flowers, I have used Susan's paper. She has a specialty paper, and I did not have this the last time I created with her dies, but she has a specialty paper sold by Spellbinders. It's 80 pounds. And it has a really nice texture to it. It really makes your flowers feel, let me, I don't know how to explain this, but they're, they're more lightweight, but they still hold their shape. And they're just realistic feeling. They're, it's, I don't know how to explain it more lightweight really I mean it, I mean that's but it still has that characteristic of flower making paper where it holds its shape it holds its little details that we're going to add to it and um, all those shapings that we're going to do to it, it it holds all of them nicely so I'm using this for the flowers and then I'm using my actual card or a flower making paper from Heartfelt that I still have for my petals or my leaves, I'm sorry. And so if you do not have that available for you, Spellbinders is now carrying a watercolor paper, which is recommended for the leaves. So for my flowers, the first thing we're gonna do is color our petals. So let me get out some scratch paper here real quick. And my Copic markers, and I'm going to use Y13, Y15, and I have Y17, but it is practically empty. I wish it wasn't empty, but it is empty. So I might get a streak or two out of it to give me some, some dark lines in the center, but that's about it. So I'm gonna take the lightest marker and I'm gonna use a chisel end on the back side. And I am just going to cover my flowers underneath. I just use a chisel, chisel end for this first underneath. No one's gonna see the bottom of the flower and I try to always remember to do this first because if I don't I'll forget <laughs> so then I turn my petals over and I'm gonna do the same thing to the front I'm gonna just go ahead and give it a nice light color for base so super simple right this is the easiest Copic coloring I will ever teach you And this is a perfect flower for you to start off with. So if you're thinking about getting into flower making, this would be a great beginning flower. And I hate that shadow. That shadow is awful. Let me see if I can get rid of a little bit of that. Let's see, that's, that's better. 
So yeah, this will be the easiest, the easiest I ever teach you. So, okay, so that was Y13. Now I'm gonna go in with Y15, and this time I'm gonna use the brush tip, and I'm going to start flicking. Now flicking is using the tip of your marker. And I'm just gonna go about halfway, maybe a little more than halfway, And just make them random, random lines. Because what you're wanting to do is have a deeper to the center, a deeper yellow to the center, than you do on the tips. Because you, the sunlight is gonna hit those tips and your inner area is where your center is gonna be and it's, there's always gonna be a shadow down towards the inner. So if you think the sun is gonna hit the outer part of those petals first. And the more you go over this, and I'm doing it twice, I'm not even counting, I'm just going around. But the more you go over it, the darker the marker gets. And since my darkest marker is pretty much out, I went ahead and kept going over it just to get our, our flower darker, okay? So that's one thing with Copics. As you layer, it gets darker and darker. So don't go all the way out and just keep going and just keep going around because you want this to look as natural as possible. But you're just flicking. And this is a great way to practice your flicks too. Like if you're learning to flick like in your other coloring, take your time with this and actually think about it. Put your picture put your um the tip down and flick up flick up flick up flick up and you'll get the thinner line down here and that is a perfect way to practice your actual copic flicks and i know we're not sitting here having a copic lesson right now but but this is a great way to practice that um without messing up. I mean, you can't mess up this. So, like I said, oops. Well, that whole thing, you can tell how dry it is because the whole marker just came out. Okay, this is not gonna give us much of anything. But I'm gonna do it anyways, just to see if I can get a stray line here and there. And it's gonna look funky, but that's okay. I just want a stray dark mark here and there. And that is okay because that black is going to be there in the center. This would normally be really dark, so you would not push as hard as I'm pushing here. But I need to get a refill. But I just want to just, just a little, 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 little something, something. And you might not be able to see it, but I can see it. So it just gives me a little definition there of lines. And actually, in this one, you can see those little streaks. You see those little tiny streaks? That's what I was doing with that marker. Just to give those few, just little tiny veins almost like that are just different colors. Okay. So now we'll do the leaves. Turn them over to the... So their backs are up. Get the backs. Because these are so different in color, that's the reason I blend in the center. Take the darkest, go about halfway, flicking upwards with the tip, trying to remember to use the tip, and flicking upwards so you get a feathering there on the end where it hits the light. 
then come in with the light. That actually looks darker. No, it doesn't. It's just on top. As the alcohol dries, it will lighten. I was questioning myself there. All right. And come back in with the dark. If you want to darken that, you can. And then let them dry. And you will be all done. And for those greens, if you want those colors, that was for the light was G99. And for the dark was YG97. So here are all the colors that I used. Okay. All right, to shape these babies, let me get this out of the way. And we're gonna use our leaf tool and our leaf mat. Using um, Susan leaf or toolkit for the flower, I am going to do three separate lines on each of these petals. So I'm going to go one down the center and I'm going to go one on either side. Now I don't make these straight lines. I do the first one, the one down the center I do straight, but then I make these other ones kind of curved. And I do that because to me, and this is just personal preference, everybody's different. Nature is never the same. Nature is different. Like if you pick up two leaves off the ground right now in the fall, none of them are gonna be the same. It's like snowflakes, right? Snowflakes are never the same. And neither are flowers, neither you know, rocks. You know, you pick pick up, you know, pull two pieces of grass. They're not going to be the same. So your flowers don't have to be the same either. And your flowers are going to look different than my flowers. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Remember what I always tell you. You are the artist. There's absolutely no reason why your work has to look like anybody else's. There's no reason why it can't look like anybody else's either. So if you want it to look 100% natural, then strive for that. That's what Susan does. She wants her flowers to be 100% natural, and that is okay. Her work is gorgeous. She's the designer of these flowers, these dyes, and her work is stunning. Her design team's work is stunning. They make it as natural as they can get it. And I, I mean, I respect them for that, but there's also a line where you can go out of the box too, as an artist, and you can make your flowers look how you want them because you're the artist. And everybody should feel like they can bring their creativity to the table. So don't let anyone ever tell you that you have to conform to any specific way. You be you. If you want your work to look like mine, copy my work. I completely wholeheartedly hope that you do if you if you want it to look like that go for it I find that as a compliment to what I do as a craft I want to motivate you to use your craft stuff to me that's why I do this I want to inspire motivate is probably not a good word inspire is probably a better word I want to inspire you to use your God-given talent. God gave you a want and a desire to be creative. 
And if that makes you happy, then be you and do that. Right now, I'm just going down the center of the flowers. I mean, <laughs> duh, the leaves. And doing three lines, very similar to what I did here. And you can actually even do more than that if you want to. You can, you know, come in here and do multiples. I think that's how I did here. So I'm sitting here talking and I'm doing them like the flowers instead. But you see here I did multiples. And I do mine, I do mine on the front instead of on the back side. And it's because I'm not using the um, hand pastels. You can use these, and I have them, but I'm not personally using them because I don't have the little applicators. So rather than use them, and when Susan does her, her leaves, I believe she scores them from the other side and then scores them and she highlights the top with the pan pastel and then inverts them and does this part. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the correct way. Don't hold me to that, but I think that is the way she does them. So I'm going to just take this in the center increase it I'm using my um, reverse tweezers here and I'm not doing these as good as I did them previously because it's been a few days since I was doing them and I'm talking and I, I really what I was talking about really was from the heart and I got distracted. So I apologize for that. These aren't going to look as good as my other ones. But So I'm pinching this like I would. Normally I would do it straight down the center first. Then I would crease it. Crease it to where we have it creased in half. Okay. Then I would add the detail lines. That's normally how I would do it. So I'm just kind of backtracking here and, and doing these a little backwards. I'm not the best at leaves. I'm so missing my heartfelt creations molds for my leaves, but I'm getting there. I am loving my flowers though. But I'm not used to leaves being so tiny. And these are not tiny compared to the other ones. When we get to the asters leaves, now those are tiny. But they're fun. They're cute. They're cute. Okay. So we've got those. And then these, here again we have those marked. But these are going to be just... These are just a pinch. They're not a crease, they're a pinch. And actually, you can do them with this, with the detail tweezers. And you're just pinching them. That's all you're doing is pinching them all the way around. See how easy this is? Whoop. <laughs> And then I squish the whole thing. <laughs> so pinch. Oh, that one didn't get creased. Easy fix. And pinch. I picked up the other tool. This one's just a little skinnier. Doesn't really matter. I think I did that one with the other one too. It doesn't really matter. But you see those just have a bigger cup. They're not creased. They're just kind of pinched. And you see how my lines are kind of, they're all different. They're just kind of 
I, I really like that there and being a little different on each one. I like that detail. But Susan's paper here is very easy to shape and mold. You can also spritz the back of it before you do this. Um, and that will also help it. Okay. So now we're going to glue those two together. But before we do that, I'm going to change the head of this to the medium ball here because we're done with the leaf tool. This is one thing I love about her toolkit is you just change it out. Um, and I don't know if you're a heartfelt follower and lover and you've used golf tools in the past you know how darn expensive those things are? If you never bought yourself golf tools because of how expensive they are, Susan's Toolkit has these tools. And I made these little flowers that we're going to put on this project today. Little tiny. These are, these are Susan's flowers, but they're not a specific flower. In other words, I used one of her dyes, but I made up the flower. <laughs> but... I did this with the littlest one of these. So it gives you this nice little wrinkle around here and it's all part of the toolkit. So you don't have to buy an extra $40 thing for golf tools. <laughs> so for the leaves, once you've done shaping them, once you've done all of this, turn it over to the backside and just come to the tip of the leaf with your medium ball tool and just kind of rub there on the tip and it gives whoops it gives this a little crease right there it just gives that a little a little something something there on the end so when you put it in it here again you've got that highlight right there isn't that cool so it's like it's curved and the sun is hitting it right there i just love that the way that it's colored and you get that highlight and then it gets deeper as it gets lower and that's where your flower is going to be so you see that deep shadow I just love that so again just turn these upside down and just come in here and give this a little rub right there just on the tip and that's just going to turn that highlight towards the sun Yeah. Isn't it cute? I love it. Okay, and then for these little girls, just rub their bellies a little bit. Just a little. They're not going to be open too, too much, but just a little. Okay. So now we will glue these together. Offsetting. Oops. Offsetting their arms. If my glue will come out. Of course, I don't have the pin in it. There we go. So I use barely art glue with my flowers. I just find it's easy with the precision tip. Okay. So we're going to alternate those. This is a daisy type flower. So I wanted to show you an alternative while we're at this point. Look at this that I designed. Now, I haven't put the second white one under it yet, but look at the center of it, the way I did it. With just a few little frills, plus the center that Susan gives you. And then I just used a white one, and then I just used, um, which, let's see, I used Seagrass Archival ink for the, um, the coloring. Isn't that a pretty white daisy? So you put a second white one under here. To give it and, and leave it open more open for the daisy and i just thought that was so cute so i might be putting those on a different project i only made that one single one but i thought this one is more like kind of up like a cone almost like and the daisy is more like open is what i thought you know but i was just playing around just being an artist <laughs> 
Okay, so now you have this die that does all of your little stars, and this is gonna be our center. And you're, you're gonna use your smallest ball tool, and you're just going to push each of these down. And I'm using the this extra mat here. Um, it's called a speed ball mat, and you can get them on Amazon or at any art supply store. It does not come in the kit, and if I remember, I will link um, Amazon. That's where I bought mine. So there's all our little stars, and now we're just going to use the detailed scissors or scissors, the detailed tweezers, and I'm just going to put dots of glue in here. I'm going to use these detailed scissors. <laughs> I can't talk, guys. Detailed twi tweezers. I'm having a tongue twister and I'm just going to put these little stars in the center of my flower. Like so. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not very well, but I'll hold it up for you in just a second. I'll get the first row of them done. And then you can see them. These tweezers are amazing. Now, if you have tools already from other sets and you see any of these tools that you like, but you don't want to buy the whole set, some of these tools, not all of them, but some of them do come individual on the website. I know you can get the detailed tweezers, and I know you can get the reverse tweezers. Um, the paper comes separately. Let me show you that first row. All I've done is covered the center with those little stars. Super easy. Okay? Isn't it looking good? Then I'm just going to put some dots kind of in between the stars. And just use the other ones and cover up the glue. And these detailed tweezers make life easy so I'm going to just put those on there and then while this dries we will start building our card and then we will add a few a few prills to this as well before we put it on our card but I'm going to let this dry just a little bit before we do that. But this, I mean, I know looking at that die that makes all these stars, you probably are going, <gasps> I know I did. I was like, I've never seen anything like that before. But it's actually super easy, guys. <laughs> it, re it really is. It's, it's not as much work as it looks. I mean, look. And then all that glue will dry clear. You won't see any of it. And it will... After the prills, it will look like that. All the stars really do is build up the center. And you put a little bit of prills on it. And, and actually, that's probably too many prills. <laughs> but that's what happened when I did it. And But it looks natural. So very, very cool. So we're going to just sit this one over here out of our way so it can dry. And we will start our card. Okay, so here's our card base. I've already added a sentiment, and I am bringing in, just because I had to play with this, I really wanted to mix the mushroom with it too, but the flowers for, oops, sorry about bumping that, the flowers for the perspective was too big for the mushroom. So the mushroom didn't get in it, but I loved these leaves. So for space... For, to take up some space on my card, just for a background die, I'm using these. I know they don't look real, but in Melanie's fantasy world, they do. So, I'm taking artistic liberty, and I'm going to put down my cute little fantasy leaves. Because I like them. So, we're going to... 
be a little bit out of the box, but with realistic Black Eyed Susans. And I did my best to show you the realistic way of making them. And I want this big sunflower to show because I love Susan's sunflower. And I'm going to tuck this little, this little branch, the ending branch, right there under the ribbon. The ribbon is how I kind of disguise that seam. So this is kind of how I imagine this when I was designing the idea of this card. I just love this leaf though. This was part of the die of the month in September, the stitch die of the month, and I love stitching on cards. I want more time to stitch on cards. I would stitch every day if I had the time. I love stitching. So, and stitching on cards is so much easier than stitching like cross stitch. It is so much easier. So if you've ever cross stitched and like you stopped because your eyes, which is the reason I stopped with my eyes, I couldn't keep following the pattern. When you stitch on cards, there is no pattern. So, okay, so those are my idea for just a background die. We're still gonna have our natural leaves and everything, but that is just a, a, a filler just to fill the space. That was my idea. So now we're going to come in with our flowers let's see how we want these. I don't even know if I'm going to use all five of them. So we might not even use five of them. How many do we want? Let's see. Because then we're going to have our leaves too. See what I mean? The background, the background leaves are just to, to add some filler. It's not even going to show that much. I just wanted that green to tie in. And I knew these natural leaves were supposed to be olive more of an olivey color, and I didn't want my project to be olive. So, hmm, so we're just gonna play with this placement-wise for a minute. I want my stems to be covered up. We're gonna bring our little cutesy flowers in here and see, do we want another one? down here so then we have these little buds these little babies that I've got to to just kind of add in here just some little extra extra details I just thought that would be cute to have a little filler flower I feel like these need to be closer together though Do we want just three? We might just go with three. That way more of the green shows. I love that green. I'm usually not a green person either. Okay, let's see. What if we put a few of these around? Let's see, we could put an extra one of those. I think that die said two or three on the leaves. How are we looking? Where do we, let's look at this closer and see. What are y'all thinking? You like that? It's five small flowers and three, so we've got our working for our odds. Five of the leaves. I'm kind of liking that. We might not even need these other ones. Okay, why don't we stick with that? So I'm thinking, because this is the other place I was going to think about putting Lee. You know, it's it's looking kind of crowded. And like, even with my fifth one, it's just looking like I'm covering my papers and I'm covering my leaves. And I think I like it more like this. So let's start gluing.
split. Why don't we do this one? Why don't we glue these guys first? Get them where we want them. Now I'm not going to lift this up too much because these do need to sit and dry. But I really, really like the way this has turned out. Now I've got two more flowers here. One, two, three, four, five. Do I want to do six and seven? Let's see. Or do I not want to? Well, I don't have anything there, and I don't have anything over here. Mm. Oh, there is. Let's see. Okay, that one. Okay, and this one that I was thinking about doubling up. I kind of like it when they're in a bunch. Yeah, I kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and do it just so I don't have two stranded little flowers. And the reason I have this die set here is because the jasmine is the flower I actually used to make these little guys. And I used this die right here, which is actually, I believe, the bud die in the set. This is the flower die. And this is the die that is made to go in the bud. And I wanted a little tiny filler die. Just something really tiny. I didn't want it to be the star of the show. I wanted it to be the background. And so I just used that shaping tool that I showed you. And created it from the back. Or used my, my shaping mat. And shaped it from the back pulling from the petal pulling from the edge of the petal into the center and then I turned it over and then I pressed into the center and added some pearls that's all there was to it so super super easy and I think it really made an impact here and it was super you know something simple Something that wasn't going to take me very long, but added a little something something and made my card just a little different than other people's. So there we go. That one's going to take a little bit, but there we go. So there is my card. Thanks for sticking around. And I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have bringing it to you. So I will see you guys next time. And like I said, next Wednesday, I will have the second Susan Tierney Coburn How to Make a Flower video with this collection. I'm probably only going to have the two videos this month, but the next one will be the Aster. And I hope you come back and see it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.